Hi everyone. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to solve when we're in standard form of a quadratic using the quadratic formula. So, you know that uh, there are three forms of a quadratic uh, equation and or quadratic relation, and in this case, I'm going to highlight two of them: standard form and vertex form. Now, a couple lessons ago, I showed you how to solve from vertex form, that is to say this one. And um, I'm not going to repeat that here. I'm just going to remind you that when, um, in this case, in vertex form, there's only one x term which is initially visible. And uh, so whenever you see that one x term, we have, that, we have the procedure for solving the vertex form. But in the case of standard form, we have these two x terms, right? This is the x squared term, and this is the x term here. And so it's not really obvious what operations we need to do in order to actually solve um, our equation. Now remember, whenever I say solve, I really mean for a given value of y, we're trying to find the value of x that, um, that corresponds to it. So... Um, so essentially, whenever we're working with a standard form quadratic, we need a tool, and in this case, the tool that we use is called the quadratic formula. And I'm just going to write it down. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. Okay? And so that's the quadratic formula. Now, if you're, I'm not really the kind of person to memorize things, but if you are, this is definitely something that you want to memorize. And even if you're not the kind of person to memorize things, this is a good one to memorize. You're going to be using it um, a fair bit this, this year and also next year, so may as well remember it now. Now, in the quadratic formula, you've got these letters, B, A, C, and those, of course, are the same as these letters A, B, C here, right? So whatever numbers you have here for A, B, and C, those will, whoops, those will go in the appropriate places in the quadratic formula. Okay? So that's, so this is the quadratic formula, and um, at the end of this lesson, I'll show you a derivation of where it comes from. Uh, a couple things I want to point out. First of all, we've got this plus or minus here. Plus or minus, implying that in not all cases, but in many cases, the quadratic formula would give you two answers, right? So one, so we'll have to do two operations or two steps to find out the answer that goes with the plus and the answer that goes with the minus, or so the solution that goes with those rather. Okay. The second thing that maybe isn't as obvious, um, but I'll uh, point it out now, is that the um, axis of symmetry comes out of the quadratic formula. The axis of symmetry is actually given by this here. This thing out front is the axis of symmetry. So you sometimes see in um, in lessons or in textbooks or that sort of thing, you might see this formula. Uh, Vx, which is the x-coordinate of the vertex, <coughs> excuse me, equals negative b divided by 2a. So if you're ever just looking for your axis of symmetry, that's it. Okay, the other thing that um, I might point out is, you'll learn more about this in grade 11, but I'll just kind of mention it now. This term here, underneath the square root sign, is as a special name, this b squared minus 4ac, that's known as the discriminant. Oops. How do you spell it? Okay, b squared minus 4ac. And basically that, um, that, uh, that term tells you how many answers or solutions you are going to have um, when you solve your quadratic. If this, so this is a number, right? This is all a bunch of numbers. 
whatever values B, A, and C have, if you um, evaluate this, you will get a number. And if that number is greater than zero, you'll have two solutions. If it's equal to zero, you'll have one solution. And if it's less than zero, you'll have no solutions. Okay? Like I said, you'll spend more time on that in grade 11, so I'm not going to go into too much detail right now. Um, yeah, so just look forward to that in grade 11. Okay, now I just want to do a couple examples. So let's say, for example, our prompt is uh, solve um, where we have this parabola and this horizontal line. So whenever we say solve, we're trying to find the values of y. Uh, sorry, we're trying to find the values of x for a corresponding value of y. Graphically, we're trying to find the intersection points of this parabola and this horizontal line. So our first step is always to set the y's equal to each other, right? So I'm going to start off by saying 10 equals x squared plus 2x minus 5. Okay, that's always step one. The second thing that I'm going to do, step two if you will, is I want to make one side of my equation equal to zero. Since I only have one term on the left, this 10, I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides in order to get zero on the left just like so. so. I have 0 equals x squared plus 2x minus 15. Alright, now that I have 0 uh, on one of the sides of my equation, on the left side in this case, now I can go ahead and apply my quadratic formula. So I might just, for the sake of uh, keeping things a little easy, I'll write down a equals 1, b equals 2, and c equals negative 15. Alright, so that I know the numbers to plug into my formula. And now I'll do that. Okay, so again, our quadratic formula is x equals, equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So x equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 15 all divided by 2 times 1 so <clears throat> we're going to have negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared is 4 minus plus 60, so it's 56, all divided by 2. Okay, let me just get a little bit more, whoops, let me just get a little more room here. So again, here again you see what I was talking about earlier. This plus or minus implies that there are two answers. Answer number one is x equals negative 2 plus the square root of 56 divided by 2. And the second answer is the negative x equals negative 2 minus the square root of 56 all divided by 2. If I pull out my calculator for the first one I get x is about 2.7 oops 2.74 and for the second one I get x is approximately equal to negative 4.74 okay so those are my solutions so since I started off with uh, my y I already know my y is 10 my solutions which is to say my points of intersection I'll just do it over here my points of intersection are uh, 2.74, 10, and negative 4.74, 10. Okay, that's it. <clears throat> okay, so just remember, the steps are as follows. 
you start off by setting the y equal to each other, so 10 equals this guy over here. That's how I got my first step. That was step one. Step two was when I subtracted that number from both sides in order to get zero onto one side, which I got here. So that was step two. And then step three was uh, write down my a, b, and c values and put them into the quadratic formula. And then work it through using a calculator. Well, that's not too hard. Okay, let's try one more example. So here is a slightly more interesting question where I have a parabola um, here, x squared minus 1, and a line, y equals negative x plus 2. So in this case, the parabola, I don't know exactly what this looks like, but uh, my rough sketch would be something like this. If I have a parabola, x squared minus 1, there's that. And the line, negative x plus 2, does something like that. I don't know. So that's basically the idea. I'm going to be looking for those two points. <clears throat> okay, so finding the points of intersection is a little bit more work, but not much more. And again, it's going to start off the same way. I'm first of all going to set this equation equal to this equation. So I have uh, x squared minus 1 equals negative x plus 2. All right, so that's step one, right? Step one, done. Next, I want to get zero on one side of the equation. It doesn't really matter which side I do, so I'm going to get the right side equal to zero by adding x to both sides and subtracting two from both sides. Okay, so on this side, those cancel. Those are add to zero, I should say. And what's left on the left side is I have x squared plus x minus 3 yeah, equals 0. Okay, so that's step 2. Done. Step 3 is I want to write down my a, b, and c values. So here I have a equals 1, b is also 1, and c equals negative 3. Just like that. And I'm going to put those into my quadratic formula right now. So I have x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. Alright, put in the actual numbers, negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 3 and divide that by 2 times 1. Okay, again the plus or minus tells me that I'm going to have two answers. So the first one is x equals negative 1 plus the square root of 1 plus 12 square root of 13 divided by 2. And the other one, x is going to equal negative 1 minus the square root of 13 all divided by 2. So for the first one, I get an answer that's pretty close to 1.3. And for the second one, I get an answer that's, that's pretty close to negative 2.3. Okay? And those are my x values. To find the actual points of intersection, um, it's not quite as easy as it was before because my line is an oblique line. Right, it's got a slant to it here. <coughs> so what I would do in this case is I would take these x values and put them back into the equation of the line and just work out the y value uh, from there. And I'm not going to do that right now. But, uh, you, can always, you can always put this in the Desmos, graph this one and this one, and verify that the points of intersection are here. Okay, so... Like I said earlier, I'm going to show you where this um, quadratic formula came from. So in other words, I'm going to derive the formula. Um, I'm never going to ask you to derive a formula ever on a test or a quiz or anything like that. And um, in fact, our curriculum specifically says not to. So, but I, but I don't uh, feel it's right to ever give you a formula without showing you, showing you where it came from. 
So I'm going to start with uh, whoops, standard form, x, ax squared plus bx plus c. And I'm going to take that quadratic and make it an equation setting it equal to 0. Okay, Just like before, we always want to have one side equal to 0. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor a out of each of the terms. So I'm going to have a times x squared plus b over a times x plus c over a, and that's all going to equal 0. All right, this next step is going to be kind of annoying, but what I'm going to try, what I'm basically trying to do here is uh, complete the square from, uh, from a previous lesson. So I'm going to have a times x squared plus b over a times x plus b over 2a squared minus b over 2a squared plus c over a and then I'll equal zero. So I just want to point out these two terms here are the two new terms that I've added in and they since they add up to zero I can do it. I can always add two terms so long as they add up to zero. Then I haven't changed the balance of my formula. Alright, the next step of the equation gets a little easier. So I have a multiplied by x plus b over 2a um, squared. So that's me completing the square minus b squared over 4a plus c equals 0. So all I've done in that case is um, completed the square using these three terms. I used those three terms to complete the square. And then these two leftover terms I brought out of the uh, of the parentheses, and so they collapse down to these two. All right, next step. I'm going to uh, I'm going to add these two terms together, and to do that, I need a common denominator. So the first bit stays the same: x plus b over two a squared minus b squared over four a plus four a c over 4a equals 0. All right. And then I am, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to add, actually add those together. So I'm going to have a x plus b over 2a squared minus b squared plus 4ac all over 4a equals 0. Now this term, I'm going to add it to both sides. So in other words, this term will come over to the other side. So I have ax plus b over 2a squared equals um, b squared minus 4ac all over 4a okay the next thing I'm going to do is I have this a out front and I'm going to divide it uh, into both sides so I have x plus b over 2a squared equals b squared minus 4ac all divided by 4a squared. <clears throat> the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to square root both sides. So I have x plus b divided by 2a equals, now here I need to introduce the plus and minus, plus or minus b squared minus 4ac. I don't need that plus or minus in the denominator because that's always positive. Right? It, this, 
This guy down here can never be negative, so it doesn't matter. Oops. And I'm almost done. Sorry, just trying to work my way around here. Whoopsie daisy. Okay, anyway. Um, so then I'm just going to subtract from both sides b over 2a and now believe it or not I'm done just like that okay as a last step I would combine these two terms to get the uh, expected result x equals negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. Okay, that's where she comes from. That's it. Alright, thanks for watching. I'll see you in class. Don't forget to be awesome.